In the late 16th century, Florence and Prague possessed extensive ties of state. However, while few Bohemian influences can be detected in Florence, architecture in Renaissance Prague bears clear Italian influences. This paper concerns itself with an artificial grotto constructed in Prague by the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II and its potential link to a grotto from the Medici Villa Carolino. Although no conclusive documentary evidence confirms such a link, this paper relies on formal similarities and previous scholarship connecting Pratolino's architect, Bernardo Buontalenti, to Rudolphin constructions in Prague. However, as this paper also aims to demonstrate, the transfer of an architectural type of grotto runs parallel to a documented transfer of technology and materials between Florence and Prague. A center for this transfer was a mill adjacent to Rudolf II's grotto. The analysis of the Prague grotto and mill site as a whole provides rich connections to Medici and Florence, which have so far gone unremarked upon in the larger study of Italianate Bohemian architecture. This is not the first study to concern itself primarily with the Prague grotto, nor is it the first to suggest a connection to the Villa Pradolino. Silva Dobolova's 2009 article compares the 18th century plan of the Prague Grotto to the circular fountain of Thetis from inside Pradolino's Apennine Colossus. A connection is also posited between the Prague Grotto Dome's aperture for light and what Dobolava identifies as similar apertures in the ceiling of the Grotto of Thetis, observable in another drawing by the same artist. However, as a recent cross-section of the Apennine Colossus demonstrates, this grotto was located under a second floor with its respective grotto in the giant's head, and the openings which Dobolova identifies might instead represent pictorial lunettes, perhaps of the type which can be seen gracing the ceiling of Francesco Primo's Studiolo in the Palazzo Vecchio. Additionally, by linking the Prague Grotto of Rudolf II to other grottos in Italian villas from the same time period, such as the Palazzo Farnese at Caparola and the Bogli Gardens of the Palazzo Pitti in Florence, Dobolova laid the foundation upon which the present study is built. The two grottos which are the focus of this study, Rudolf II's Grotto in Prague and the one named the Grotto of Cupid from Pradolino, have both survived to the present day, anomalies when considering the destruction of other contemporary works. However, their present day outward appearances do not immediately suggest a relationship or influence. Pradolino's Grotto of Cupid today looks like little more than a badly eroded hill with a circular interior covered in artificial stalactites and ringed by stone benches. Rudolf II's Grotto, when not obscured by scaffolds of preservation work, is entered through a portal modeled from Sebastiano Serlio's forms from the Seven Books on Architecture. This portal has been noted by several historians of Rudolphin architecture for its Italianate derivation. However, it does not find any parallel in the Grotto of Cupid, which originally possessed a rustic pergola no longer in situ today. In contrast, the interior of the Prague Grotto presents the appearance of regular cut stone masonry and five empty niches. It is not known what, if any, sculpture or other objects occupied these spaces. At Pratolino, the back wall facing the entrance of the Grotto of Cupid is punctuated by a circular vestibule, now empty, which once contained a rotating cupid statue, which squirted water on unsuspecting visitors. The ovoid interior of the Grotto of Cupid is distended by two small alcoves on its left and right sides, whereas the Prague Grotto approaches a more perfect circle. Further comparison of early plans and drawings from both sites brings to light more similar structures which are not outwardly obvious today. The 1750 plan of the Prague Grotto bears a close formal resemblance to a circa 1600 floor plan sketched by Giovanni Guerra. The central aperture in the plan, which Dobolova compared to what are presumably ceiling lunettes in the drawing of the Grotto of Thetis, instead finds a much more apt parallel in the Grotto of Cupid's floor plan. Guerra's notation, Luce di Sopra, eliminates any doubt that these shapes indicate openings for light, Unlike the Prague Grotto, 
two smaller openings to either side are depicted which also appear in the drawing of the Cupid statue in situ. Heinrich Schickhardt's sketch of the Grotto of Cupid from the same time period omits these supplemental light sources, but documents a classicizing lantern over the dome center. At first glance, it would be tempting to make a comparison with the Prague Grotto's lantern, but scholars do not know whether it is an original feature or a later addition. Lastly, another shared aspect of the Pratolino and Prague Grottos is their tendency to be compared by scholars to antique mausolea rather than to other contemporary examples. The regular masonry of Rudolf II's grottos, walls, and ceiling evoke the beehive construction of Tholoi tombs from the ancient world. Additionally, it must be noted that the Prague Grotto was excavated from a hillside, Alantica, and not built up ex novo as an artificial mound. Pratolino's Grotto of Cupid, although such an artificial mound, appears in the Schickart drawing presenting a long, cutaway approach still observable today, erosion notwithstanding. This strong evocation of a dromos approaching a mound with a vaulted chamber in its interior recalls not only the archetypical off-sided Mycenaean Tholoi, but Etruscan mound tombs of the same type a mere kilometers from Pratolino known in the Renaissance. Furthermore, artificial hills akin to this type appeared in both Medician and Rudolphin pageantry of the late 16th century, suggesting that the Pratolino and Prague grottos are examples of permanent, monumental realizations of a more typically ephemeral type. The two grottos may not be identical, but their strong resemblance to one another may bolster Italian architectural historian Guido Carai's hypothesis that Pratolino's architect, Bernardo Buontalenti, influenced Rudolphin architecture. Carai published a paper in 2003 which argued that a drawing of Buontalenti's from the Florentine archives was intended for an oval staircase in Prague Castle. Supporting evidence included a letter dated June 11, 1587, from Buontalenti to Rudolf II, mentioning, presumably, the same castle staircase design. Eleven years prior in 1578, Rudolf II had conferred upon Buontalenti an imperial privilege in recognition of Pratolino's monumental feats of engineering. The Florentine court reciprocated this honor by sending trained engineers to Vienna and Prague. Antonio Lupicini arrived in 1578, and in 1584, Giovanni Gargioli was recruited to work for the Holy Roman Emperor in Prague. Giovanni Gargioli is the Tuscan architect who receives credit for Rudolf II's grotto, as well as a new garden design for the castle of Brandeis on the Elbe, and other projects. Guido Carai suggested that Gargioli was essentially an intermediary for Buontalenti and the Medici court, rather than as an architect in his own right. What little solid facts we know do suggest a constant contact with Florence. Following his recruitment, Gargioli acknowledged the support of the Medici ambassador and the ultimate approval of Francesco Primo. When his formal contract began, Gargioli returned to Italy to show his models to eminent architects there. It's unthinkable that they would not have included Buontalenti. Upon his return to Prague, he wrote a letter describing Rudolf II's great appreciation for everything that comes from the hand and ingenuity of Francesco Primo. For the next eight years, Gargioli carried out works in Prague which distinguished Rudolf's works from his predecessors. Other imperial commissions may have been inspired by Pratolino's large-scale hydraulic engineering, such as the celebrated Rudolf water tunnel, which brought river water to an artificial lake. Like virtually all of Pratolino's grottos, Rudolf II's grotto is believed to have featured running water and hydraulic works as well. Documents call it a Wasserbrunnen oder Bad, or Badegrotte, and a circular fountain or reservoir can be seen in some plants. So far, Guido Corai is among the few scholars who trace Buontalentian influence in Rudolphin architecture. Within this context, this paper offers a specific model of Buontalenti's Grotto of Cupid to Rudolf II's unique grotto. From formal similarities and what is known about its architect, the transfer of architectural ideas implied by these circumstances 
runs parallel to a confirmed transfer of technology between Florence and Prague. This transfer of technology from the Medici court to Rudolf II in the last quarter of the 16th century was recorded by Giovanni Gargioli, and its activity centered upon a mill adjacent to the imperial grotto. Gargioli's report to Francesco Primo, dated July 25, 1587, communicates the emperor's happiness upon receiving stone cutting and polishing devices from Florence. The letter doesn't specify where they were installed, but current scholarship presents us with two options, either to the workshops in Prague Castle, which finished a gem's cutting and transformation into a work of art, or to the mill which expanded this activity next to Rudolf's grotto. The Bohemian Council Chamber purchased a small but active grinding mill in 1584. What other motive could necessitate the concurrent expansion of a small mill into a state-of-the-art facility for stone and glass cutting? And Rudolf II's patronage of the mill and its products did not finish with the receipt of the machines. With its new capacity to work hard stones, a Prague style of Pietre Dure artworks emerged. These were scenes composed of cut stones precisely arranged, and a medium which had largely been an exclusively Medician enterprise. Although the Bohemian lands were rich in hard stones and crystal, before the mill's expansion, local stones were sent to Florence in order to be transformed into these artworks. It must be underlined that Francesco Primo de' Medici was not only sending machinery to Rudolf II, he was sending proprietary Medici technology, which empowered Rudolf's court, and production began in earnest with the arrival of the Florentine goldsmith and master Pietro Dure, Cosimo Castrucci, in 1596. The startup of a Pietro Dure manufacturer in Prague, owing to the receipt of machines from Florence and the acquisition and renovation of a mill close to the castle, would have created strong associations at the site with its Medici benefactors. Gargioli, the architect responsible for transforming the grinding mill into an imperial holding, is the same Florentine architect who historians generally agree is responsible for the unique grotto built adjacent to the workshop. We know that this architect maintained close ties with the Medici court and its architect, Bernardo Buontalenti, who is known for realizing an unprecedented profusion of different types of grottos for Francesco Primo. Among these grottos, we find one that anticipates the basic form of the Prague Grotto. Yet so far, no connection has been made between the Prague Grotto and Pratolino. Italian historian Luigi Zangri identified others directly influenced from Medici models in France, Germany, England, and Spain. In the same article, Rudolf II's Grotto in Prague is included within this general category, but apart from recognizing Giovanni Gargioli's Tuscan origins, no further analysis is made. Similarly, Guido Corai did not include Rudolf II's grotto among works that may have been influenced, however indirectly, by Buontalenti. Rudolf II's grotto's resistance to an easy classification may have to do with the fact that its interior of regular stone masonry at first glance is so unlike the artificial stalactites in many Renaissance grottos. Scholars have more frequently compared it to antique tholoi than any contemporary example, but this is found to be a purely superficial variation on a similar type. In its present state, the Prague Grotto's destroyed rear niche reveals that its regular masonry is only a thin, trompe-loi covering rather than its method of construction. From the architect's point of view, a skin of stonework imitating antique masonry or natural stalactites is a question of aesthetics. Beneath this layer, we're left with a grotto that is remarkably similar to Buontalenti's Grotto of Cupid realized at Pratolino. When what we know about its builder and its adjacent stone mill strongly connect the grotto to Florence and the Medici, it's no stretch to propose that this piece of Rudolphin architecture may have also derived inspiration from Buontalenti and the Villa Pratolino.